Hey everyone, welcome to another Six Patterns video. I'm Kevin. I'm Max. And we're here to talk about the 25 top pearls in pulmonary pathology. Only 25, Max? Well, well. I mean, there could be more, but I think he's distilled out the 25 we really need to talk about. And we are... The most in, important. In the most the 25 important. 25 most important. Exactly. We are in... Uh, we group these into topics. We're in topic six, the last of our topic groups. And we the are... The most in, key pearls of pulmonary pathology. The most key pearls. And this is topic six, key pearls to interstitial lung disease. We've talked about every other aspect of lung disease. Non-neoplasia. Non -neoplasia. So now we're down to, actually, this is our final one. Yeah, this is this is pearl number six. And this happens to be a 55-year-old woman who's got shortness of breath and cough, which is a very common presentation We've for lung disease. that, yep. She's had that for 18 months, though. So this is a long time to have shortness of breath with cough. First, they thought it was a cardiac problem. They ruled that out. So a chronic presentation. Chronic presentation. She has a transbronchial biopsy performed, which was called non-diagnostic, no diagnostic findings. Imaging shows reticulation, which is a sign of fibrosis when there's distortion of the architecture of the lung. I, I find reticulation like a code word. Yeah. It's a radiology code word for fibrosis. Yeah. If a, if a radiologist says reticulation, you should just translate that into fibrosis. Exactly. Now, they'll tell you it doesn't always mean that, but most of the time it does. Okay. And so a surgical wedge biopsy is performed on this patient after 18 months of progressive shortness of breath. And Max, you get this biopsy. It was sent to you by somebody who called this usual interstitial pneumonia. UIP. UIP. Now, it's not surprising that someone who would, would call this usual interstitial pneumonia because the classic training in pathology is that if you have patchy, fibrosing process with areas of active fibroplasia. Right. So-called call fibroblast foci. Yeah. Geographic and temporal heterogeneity. Then you are supposed to call usual interstitial pneumonia. And right. what does that mean? And usual interstitial pneumonia is the pattern of pathology that is encountered in the idiopathic disease, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And anywhere else? So that's where the challenge comes in, is that even if you have a UIP pattern, it can be seen in a wide variety of other settings, including chronic hypersensitivity and pneumonitis, connective tissue disease associated with interstitial lung disease. Like rheumatoid arthritis. Like rheumatoid arthritis. Asbestosis. Pneumoconiosis. Asbestosis. Some smoking-related diseases like Langerhans can be patchy. So a UIP pattern isn't specific for IPF. But if a pathologist says this is UIP, the clinicians think... It oh, must be IPF. It must be idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So we're not proponents of diagnosing UIP unless you mean the idiopathic, idiopathic form. And, and it's controversial in our specialty. In pulmonary pathology, there are knockdown, drag out battles with people gouging out eyes, blood everywhere. Arguing on either side. Right. So this using a traditional diagnosis, fibroblast foci, active fibroplasia, right? right? Right. And area, patchy areas of spared lung. And areas of dense fibrosis with patchy areas of spared lung. Microscopic honeycomb. This is reasonable to consider a usual interstitial pneumonia pattern of pulmonary fibrosis. Until you do what? Well, until the clinician says, that's interesting because I wasn't expecting idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in this patient. Young. And why would the, yeah, why would the clinician not be expecting idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? She's a female. Right. She's less common in women. She's less than 60. Uncommon under 60. She has no smoking history. Most patients are smokers sometime in their history. So this patient and and radiographically has more upper lobe disease than lower lobe disease. And maybe even some air trapping. And maybe some air trapping. So the pulmonologist wasn't expecting idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And this is an important concept to remember in today's world in 2020. Because patients who present with a classic clinical presentation in classic radiology are diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. On CT scan. Without a biopsy. Right. So what does that mean for you? That means if you're getting a, a biopsy with fibrotic lung disease, there's something odd, something odd something in the clinical off. history. Yeah. 
something odd in the radiology. And so biopsies, the clinicians are not expecting a diagnosis of usual interstitial pneumonia of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Right. So what's our job when we see a, a clear fibrosis pattern like this? So to me, the first thing is, I see a fibrosis pattern. The first thing is to try to get an understanding of the distribution of the fibrosis. The anatomy of the lung and how it's affected by fibrosis, right? right? Because one of the most important things that came out of the, the guidelines, both the 2011 guidelines and the 2018 guidelines, is the importance of recognizing the distribution of fibrosis. So it's not just that it's patchy. It's that it's patchy with the right distribution. Right. So idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis should be peripheral of the lobule, right. meaning as far away from the airways as you can get. And that's going to be subplural in a lung biopsy, right? It's going right? to be subplural and paraseptal right. in a yep. lung biopsy. Yep. That's usual interstitial pneumonia right. pattern. And what about the airways subplural. in the usual interstitial pneumonia? And the airways in usual interstitial pneumonia should be spared. Right. Right? So... I think of usual interstitial pneumonia, and then I think of the other two main patterns of fibrosis that you can see. Nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, which is a more diffuse fibrosing process, and then airway-centered fibrosis. So in the family of chronic hypersensitivity. In the family of chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis or chronic aspiration, in which really the, the fibrosis is the opposite of what you see in UIP because the fibrosis starts in the center and works its way out to the periphery of the lobule. Right. So if UIP is the periphery of the lobule creating its way in. a donut of fibrosis, yeah. Yeah. chronic HP is the donut hole starting right. in the center and working its way out. Right. So the center of the lobule. How do I know if I'm in the center of the lobule? I mean, the lung is a crazy uh, three-dimensional structure in two-dimensional sections. It's very hard to navigate. How do you figure out where the center of the lobule is? Well, I find finding the artery is the most important thing because once you find the artery, you know that is where the airway at least used to be. Yeah, and maybe the airway's been messed up, like become complicated, like that. Like this. So uh, I'm, a beautiful I'm just going to tell you, this image right here is not UIP, not usual interstitial pneumonia of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis right. because this is a centrolobular scar with abundant chronic small airways remodeling, telling me that there is a lot of airway damage airway damage going on. Peribronchiolar metaplasia, mucostasis, bronchioloactasia, right. scarring. Right. And when we look at higher power here, we can recognize, yes, there's scarring there. There's even active fibroplasia within these areas, and we have all of the peribronchiolar metaplasia. This is the donut hole of fibrosis. Because it's no longer a hole. It's no longer a hole. <laughs> Exactly. It's it's a reverse donut hole. It's so a reverse donut it's hole. It's a dense hole and <laughs> instead of a hole. And there's your artery. So yeah. when I see something like this, I say, okay, this is strongly suspicious for a airway-centered airway -centered fibrosing process. Now, just real quick before we go to higher power, here's another airway with airway-centered fibrosis. A lot of chronic small airways. Remodeled. Seen in a different plane. Seen in a different plane, more traversing the section. Right. And there's other ones... Um, I can't tell on some of these things. Like like some of these lobules, well, some they're of, completely hosed. Some of this is end stage lobule. Yeah, I can't and tell you can't whether it started on the inside or the body. outside. Right. right. So hypersensitivity pneumonitis usually has some histologic features that can help us confirm the diagnosis. You meant to say often, see. right? And instead of usually, because usual, you want to stay away from the word usual when you talk about fibrosis. Often, so often has, has some histologic features. Histologic features that are helpful. So what would we look for? Well, in the subacute form, usually you know uh, weeks to months in evolution, you have these granulomas and an alveolitis. So it's a it's kind of a little tiny, indiscreet, uh, indistinct granulomas around the airways. In the late phases of hypersensitivity, in the chronic phase, you get a lot of peribronchial metaplasia, but you might not man get many granulomas still, and you might not have as much alveolitis either. Exactly. But if you find the granuloma, boy, can that be it's useful. It's very helpful. Because it's not allowed in UIP. That's the best part. You go to the guidelines and it says, if you've got granulomas on the airways, do not, not diagnose UIP. UIP of IPF. You're supposed to go into either indeterminate or alternative diagnosis. Right. So here we have it, folks. A Boom. beautiful, poorly formed, unquestionable, non-necrotizing granuloma. And its location is important, just like in real yep. estate. It's not a few multinucleated giant cells out here within the airspace. This is a poorly formed, non-necrotizing granuloma in the interstitium. Yeah.
and it does still have a little bit of an inflammatory cell infiltrate. Yep. So this is chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Not usual interstitial pneumonia. So the pearl in this case, and, and we see this on a daily or every other day basis, is that not all pulmonary fibrosis is usual interstitial pneumonia pattern of pulmonary fibrosis. And I'll take it a step further. Not all temporal heterogeneity is usual interstitial pneumonia of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Right. And I think there's a couple of things. It's, our, it's the way we train people in pulmonary pathology. It's the word, the usual kind. It's the kind we see often. It's How is that something specific? It's almost nonspecific. I know. So, <laughs> But that's the key. Remember that in today's world, it's less likely to receive a biopsy that is going to be classic usual interstitial pneumonia. And... Not all pulmonary fibrosis, even heterogeneous pulmonary fibrosis, is usual interstitial pneumonia of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So look for more diffuse involvement for NSIP. Look for airway-centered involvement in granulomas for chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Polarize your scope and look for dust for pneumoconiosis. Or foreign body, too. Or foreign body. Like aspiration. So, great case. What's our pearl? The pearl, not all pulmonary fibrosis is usual interstitial pneumonia. Great. We nailed it. Don't forget to like and comment below and subscribe. Subscribe if you like. Thank you.